Hello guys, welcome back. My name is Nathan and today we're going to be talking about the possibility and the latest rumors surrounding the Vancouver Canucks and then potentially trading for Oliver Ekman Larson. Now this comes from the latest 31 thoughts from Elliot Freeman where he said that the Vancouver Canucks are not just in the mix but have called the Arizona Coyotes about a potential OEL trade. So that begs the question, how likely is an OEL trade for the Vancouver Canucks and what would a Oliver Ekman Larson trade look like for Vancouver and the Arizona Coyotes. Watch till the end for all my thoughts and all the latest rumors and of course hit that big red subscribe button for more videos just like this one. Now honestly I could just end up making two videos today both on this rumor and just recapping a bunch of other rumors in one video but today I wanted to talk about this OEL situation because there is a lot of stuff to talk about and a lot of different layers. Now no, we're not going to have onions. <laughs> I felt like I needed to make that rubbish. Anyways, uh, when it comes to the direct rumor from Elliot Freeman, he said that not sure if it is even possible, quote, but I think Arizona and Vancouver had an Oliver Ekman Larson conversation. Now that again, coming from his recent 31 thoughts, there was a lot of different stuff there. So again, I might make a different video later today, recapping all the other stuff, but I felt like this deserved its own video because there's a lot that could potentially happen here. Now, if you haven't been recapped, the Arizona Coyotes have went through a lot of different stuff over the past couple of months. Chica got fired and then they got uh, all, the tr all the trouble from the NHL. They lost draft picks. Now they have a new GM and now they can trade a bunch of different guys. And one of the main ones is Oliver Ekman Larson, who they just signed with an extension last year and just made captain last year. He signed for eight two or eight point two five million for seven more seasons. And that's the type of contract that if Arizona wants to get cap space and wants to save money, that's who you're trading. Especially when we look at how that contract is fulfilled. There's a lot of signing bonuses starting this next season. And for teams that are more on the poor side, signing bonuses are not good news. And for a team like Vancouver, they could take that on. Maybe the cap space might be a trouble and it depends who they sign in free agency. But an OEL deal, depending on who gets moved, could definitely work. Now, Elliot Freeman has also mentioned a few other teams that are in the race for OEL, teams like the Flames, Oilers, and even the Boston Bruins. But when you look at those teams and the young talent they have, it's not really a bunch of expendable guys. I mean, with Boston, they have great young players like Pasternak and McAvoy. But unless Arizona's Kentucky getting DeBrusque back and like a bunch of other stuff, I'm not sure if that would be the main piece of an OEL trade. Same thing with the County Flames and even the Amazon Oilers. I mean, when we look at the Flames, unless Noah Hannafin is the main piece back, they're not giving up Matthew Kachuk, they're not giving up even Elias Lindholm or Sean Monahan. I mean, who knows? When it comes to Edmonton, I mean, maybe Nugent Hopkins, but I don't know if that would be worth it for them. On the defense, I don't think they're giving up Darnell Nurse, Oscar Clefbaum, maybe, but I don't know if they would give that up either. It's an interesting scenario, but for the Vancouver Canucks, they definitely are one of those teams that loves to go bold. And we've already heard some, some forwards and some young players involved in trade deals. And for Canucks fans, you kind of know what I'm going at, but we'll get into that in a second. Now, when it comes to the UFAs, I think that's what Vancouver is really waiting for to get into the trade market. Of course, they have Tanev, they have Markstrom, and they have Tyler Toffoli. And it seems like Tyler Toffoli is almost basically signed at this point. They're just waiting to see what happens with the other free agents. Tanev, though, if we're looking at an OEL situation, there's no way he stays in the Canucks unless they make some absolutely big moves to that defense. And same thing goes for Jacob Markstrom, almost. I mean, unless they can get rid of some big Big cap, Markstrom also might be out the door, which is a huge problem. But I feel like there is a way for Vancouver to take on OEL and and to be able to sign Jacob Markstrom. And it's sad, it's sad because I don't want to see him moved, and I would prefer Vancouver to not do this. But Brock Besser. And I, I feel like Brock Besser would be the main piece of an OEL deal, but I feel like it can also benefit a Vancouver Canucks in a little bit of a way. Now, in terms of Brock Besser, he's a player that I think has amazing potential. I wouldn't give up on him if I was Vancouver nearly as fast as they're trying to do right now, but He's the type of player that did have a little bit of a slower season. Still looked pretty good in the playoffs, though, getting 11 points in 17 games. That's a player that I would totally keep on that forward group. And again, he is a part of that future, whether Vancouver likes it or not. So if they trade him, it doesn't look nearly as good. But for Arizona, 
let's be real here, that's the exact type of player they'd want. He does have his deal for two more seasons, and I'm pretty sure $5.8 million, uh, but he's at 23 years old, he still has an amazing potential, and especially when it comes to goal scoring, that's a player that they would love to have on that first line, and I could totally see Arizona wanting him, and that being the make or break in this potential OEL deal. So I wouldn't be surprised for Canucks fans, if Besser is the guy that goes back. But there is a way that Vancouver can kind of finagle this to get OEL and also keep Jacob Markstrom. And it depends on what Arizona is looking for. Because if they're just looking to get rid of cap space just for this year and for all the rest of the years, then we might be in a little bit of trouble. But if they're looking to just get rid of cap long term and maybe bring a little bit more for the next season, then this could be a very interesting trade scenario. Now, the trade I have lined up right now, and this could end up happening, this could end up not, but I feel like this can... Uh, personally, I wouldn't do this deal by Vancouver, but I feel like it would be a deal that both teams can agree on. Going to the Vancouver Canucks, of course, is Oliver ekman Larson, and I really don't see Arizona retaining any salary on this deal. Again, a seven-year deal, I don't see Arizona having any part in that. To the Arizona Coyotes, though, Brock Besser, Brandon Sutter, a 2021 first-round pick, and Jet Wu. Now, the big one is Brandon Sutter, because he has one year left on his deal for 2021. If Arizona can take on some short-term deals for long-term cap gain, then I think Sutter is a perfect fit. Had a more of a decent year with Vancouver, and he could be on the buyout scenario. I feel like for Arizona, that's a contract they can take on, eat for a year, and then forget about afterwards. But you could bring on more value, which I think is what is in this trade. You get Brock Besser, but then you get first round pick and Jet Wu as well. I think that's a pretty great haul for the Arizona Coyotes, again, if they want to take in that cap space short term. And here's the thing. I personally wouldn't do this, but if OEL does rebound in Vancouver, then this is a interesting trade for the Vancouver Canucks and could possibly be worth it. I still think Arizona probably wins it, but getting OEL, that's a great name on that team and on that defense. Again, if he does rebound, he would be excellent with Quinn Hughes in that left side. And then we get into the big problem, I think, with this deal, just in general for the Vancouver Canucks, no matter who they give up. It's just Oliver ekman Larson. To me, he hasn't been the same player since about 2017. Since 2017, 2018, I'm pretty sure. His, not just his production has dropped, but when you look at the eye test, it's just not as impressive. I think OEL in his prime is an excellent defender, first pairing guy for sure, but he hasn't been up to that level over the past few seasons. And that might just because he's banged up and all that, but if he's not able to return to that pre-2017 form, then no way can Vancouver get whatever they can work back and, and actually win this trade, I feel. Another big problem for me is that Quinn Hughes is also on that left side as well. So even though you have a top two lefty of Hughes and OEL, which is great, how are you going to play that? Do you have OE on the defensive situations, Quinn Hughes on the offensive situations? That could work, but also once Quinn Hughes gets paid, you're paying basically, I would assume, around $16 million for your top two left D, which is a lot to give up, especially when one of those guys isn't the first pairing guy. So I don't know how Vancouver would do that and actually make sense of it, but in this deal, if you do get rid of Brandon Sutter, that does leave you options to still sign Jacob Markstrom if you want to. I don't know if they'd be able to keep Tanev. It might be a long shot, but maybe at that point they're able to bring it on. Maybe they end up giving another contract like uh, Sven Berchi or something, but if that's the deal, then the cap space is definitely worth it, but you do bring on OEL. You have to give up guys like Brock Besser. And even though they gave up the first round pick last year in the tan uh, in the uh, in the JT Miller trade, and it did work out pretty well for them. Who knows what happens this time around with OEL? Because again, if he doesn't rebound, if he's not healthy, and he doesn't go back to that 2017 pre-self, then it might not be worth the Canucks to even consider. I think the health will be the biggest thing for OEL, uh, and Vancouver will have to check up on that before they do this deal. And it, it's just a trade that I think if OEL isn't able to rebound, Vancouver just has no way of winning this trade, especially if the asking price starts at Brock Besser. To me, if I'm Vancouver, I'd look in more homegrown ways to build that defense rather than bringing in a guy like OEL that, that just hasn't been as good recently 
recently and again is signed for seven more years at 8.25 unless they're somehow able to get some salary retention for Arizona I don't know how this deal would work for the Vancouver Canucks and I don't know how they would win this deal if OEL does rebound though solid player would automatically be maybe their best defensive defenseman on the team potentially depends who they have if they still have Tanev back but OEL is just a big risk for that Vancouver team. It could end up happening, and we could end up seeing a trade, but if I was the Vancouver GM, which I'm obviously not, especially at this deal right now, I'm saying no automatically. I'm sorry, I'm strong. It's just the way it be. But I think there's a lot of different ways this OEL trade could potentially go. So let me know down in the comments, how do you see an OEL trade of Vancouver working? What would your trade proposal be if you're a Canucks fan? And if you're a Yotes fan, what would your trade proposal be as well? Let me know what you're comfortable giving up. And if you want to see OEL and Vancouver Canucks anyways, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button as well with that notification bell to get notified on all my recent uploads. Make sure you comment down below all your thoughts, share this video with your friends, Get it out there and click on this card for all my NHL trade news and discussions right on one playlist. My name is Nathan. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video or stream. Goodbye.